Boat Annie. Red alert, he's coming out. Look, there's nothing to it. Worst comes to the worst, you play your race in the hole. Tell him that somebody else wants you for a job. Uh, are you sure it won't work? Well, sure, that's how I got my late husband to propose. Told him Francis X. Butchman was after me. <laughs> Well, if anybody wants me, I'll be at the office. It's a fool, Francis. Something I can do for you, Pinto? Uh, I, I just wanted to wish you a good day at the office, boss. Yeah. Well, that'd be a nice change. <laughs> what I wanted to say is, you, you don't want to give me a, a raise, do you? A raise? Yes. Oh, my boy, if you could have been in there with me checking on these balance sheets, you'd know that I, I can hardly keep my head above water. Gee, I'm sorry, boss. If there is anything I can do, the cacatos... <laughs> what I mean to say is, I've been offered the job with more money, and I thought I'd give you a chance to meet it. Hmm. Well, probably you are worth more than you're getting. You know, you're an excellent cook and a good all-round hand. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. You know, I don't feel like a boss to you, Pinto. No? No. I feel more like a father to you. Oh, daddy. <laughs> no, I don't want to stand in the way of your advancement. You go ahead and take this other job, my boy, and my best wishes go with you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> hey, he likes me. He thinks the world of me. He feels just like a father to me. He... <laughs> he fires me. <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, quit worrying. You get something. There's a job for every man in the world. Yeah, I know. And you just lost me mine. Here's something interesting. What? Outdoor job, pleasant surroundings, two hours a day, 500 bucks a week. I'll take it. Who's offering a job like this? Nobody. Somebody wants one. Uh, <laughs> shipless. Anything there for a cook? Cook, 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 cook. No, no cooks. Here's a good one. Wanted an atomic scientist. Atomic scientist? Now, what do I know about atomic energy? Well, you faked cooking till you learned it, didn't you? Maybe you can fake that, too. Ah, uh, I couldn't even fake myself a raise. I guess I'm just a flop. Hey, shipless. You know where I can get a gun? Oh, you'd only miss anyway. <laughs> Feel sorry for yourself. Something's bound to turn up. Well, it's better. All I got left in the world is 140 books. Miss Fogarty's been right here. Miss Fogarty speaking. Yeah, uh, Mr. Fogarty? This is Simpkins of the Gas Company. Again. About that little bill you owe for the last few months. Oh, it's you, Dr. Spitzler. You say you got the report on my examination? <coughs> What's that? I gotta go to a warmer climate. Well, uh, uh, Fogarty, have you gone out of your mind? This is Simpkins of the Gas Company. Gas. I gotta go today. You mean immediately? The doc, I can't do that. I had 50 customers in for breakfast. And they're all coming back for lunch. Yeah, good business, too. Yeah. Now, look here, Fogarty. I'm sure I don't know what your game is, but I assure you, sir, you'll hear from us. Yeah, I guess you're right, Doc. There's no sense in me being the uh, richest man in the cemetery. Bye. <laughs> Overhearing your trouble and let me be the first to offer my heartiest condolences on your sin. <laughs> well, it's easy for him to talk, expecting me to give up a little gold mine like this. Ever thought of selling? Sell Fogarty's memory. Why, if it wasn't for me cough, I wouldn't take $200 for this place. Take 140 175 and not a cent less. Oh, all I got is 140 I got 15 oh. Well, I'll handy up 20 here. There. Get your deal. 
and you thought it was going to be a bad day. Just goes to show you, when fate kicks you in the pants, it might be opportunity knocking at your door. <laughs> you write me out a recipe for that money. Come on, boys, let's take an indentatory here. <laughs> to be a big business title. Oh, just great, Annie. It's so nice of you and simplest to help me out. Oh, that was nothing besides the Narcissus hasn't got me hauls over the weekend anyway. Wonder why that new rush is. Well, hold your horses. Maybe it ain't noon yet. Yes, now. This is it, men. What's <laughs> the matter with you? You're getting fat. Hey. Well, let me go. You want to get trampled? Now, shitless, you steer half of them over at the counter, and I'll pack the rest of them into the table. Pinto, do you think you can get them orders out fast enough? Fast enough? You'll be thinking they'll be coming out of a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe everybody's on a diet. Maybe there's not going to be no noon rush. Yeah. Well, what have we been worried about? Here comes a customer now. Yeah, hello. Just take any vacant seat. And what would you like? The icebox. Huh? Oh, you mean something cold out of the icebox. Uh-huh, the icebox. I'm repossessing. Unless you want to pay the $7 that Fogarty still owes. $7? Six? Seven. Six? One. Seven. Eight. Well, running a restaurant without an icebox is like doing without a stove. Payment on that's due tomorrow. Just give it to me easy. The coffee urn? Six more payments and it's yours. Cash register? And the counter? And the mirror? And the clock? Well, so long. Looks like we'll be seeing a lot of each other. Don't you want to eat something? That's sneaky, Fogarty. I'll bet that phone call to the doctor was a phony. Yeah. It looks like we owe for everything except the air we breathe. <laughs> oh, and just to make the day perfect, here comes old Sea Biscuit to give us the horse laugh. Well, I heard you was opening up a little business, so I bring you something. <laughs> Here, stop this that hole in your head. Hey, Annie, what are you running here? Don't look like awake. There ain't enough people. <laughs> hey, if you keep that up, we can arrange one for you. You know, Pinto, that's what you get for talking to this old petticoat. If you'd been looking for a brain, why didn't you come to somebody who had one? <laughs> why don't you get out of here? Don't worry. <laughs> It's not your fault, Annie. You did your best. Give me that phone. Hello, yes, this is Annie Brennan. Good. Maybe you'll make more sense than that lunatic Fogarty. I'm calling about the gas bill. Do we want to sell? I don't make me laugh. We haven't even had time to make a capital gain. Why, this is a gold mine. Is everybody in that place crazy? You know, see here. Now, we don't want to sell. Why, we've got a dozen reservations for lunch alone. Yeah. Well, try me again. I might change my mind. You know, uh, I couldn't very well help over here. And Annie Brennan, if you're trying to get me to buy this dump with that old wheeze, you're stupider than I thought you were. Dozen reservations. Who'd make a reservation to get heartburn in this flight track? But he's trying to sell you nothing, so just forget it. Well, now, if maybe if I was to see a crowd of people in here with my own eyes, I... Well, just stick around. You know, slosh up some stew for those guests that'll be here any minute. <laughs> 
<laughs> Suppose it'll be fish chowder again today, huh? Yeah. Why not? Been fish chowder every day for the past six months. Hey, good news! Free eat down hot cake haven just down the street. Come on! <laughs> Did you girls hear me? I said free eats. So what? We get free eats here. Yeah, and we don't have to waste no shoe leather to get it. What you serving? Well, the chef recommends a stew. Any fish in it? No, pure rabbit. Hey, fella, something without fins. Come on. Well, reservations for a joint like this? Ha! Oh, we didn't have enough customers, huh? Hey, come on, get the ball. Oh. Dario, get the ball. <laughs> of them reservations don't show up too soon, we'll have to inflate the place. Annie Brennan, this is the mangiest trick you pulled on me yet. Why, Horatio, whatever do you mean? Oh, whatever do I mean? You think I'd ever get into a nice little business like this and not cut you in, do you? No, not me, not Horatio Bullwinkle. But, after all, I got a lot of sense of loyalty, I have. Oh, well, don't mind me. I can stay in the tug business the rest of my life, working my fingers to the bone, waiting for my old age pension, and... It ain't for sale. I know it ain't for sale, Annie. I wouldn't expect you to part with it, but, well, couldn't you just sell me a little piece of the joint? How big a piece? Well, hmm. I got 25 bucks that ain't working. 25 smackers? 25 smackers. Oh, that wouldn't even pay for the finger bowls. <laughs> No, no, wait a minute. I'll talk it over with my partners. Shepler's Pinto, we're holding the board of directors meeting. Be right back. <laughs> the meeting will come to order. Bullwinkle wants to buy in for 25 bucks. I vote no. Why should we sell with all those customers out there? I got news for you. All those customers out there are freeloaders from the soup kitchen. Oh. Besides, we need new blood in that cash register. And I make a motion that we take Bullwinkle in as a $25 partner. We need the money to pay for the food that all them freeloaders are shoving into them. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, aye. The motion is carried and the meeting is rejoined. Let's get the 25 bucks. <laughs> Congratulations, you've just been anonymously elected a partner. Well, uh, thanks. Here's your money. Uh, mm, mm, 25. Horatio. <laughs> How about another steak? And this time with the little bitty mushrooms. Oh, you can shoo eat. Well, I'm hungry. There'll be a dollar and a quarter more. Huh? What are you doing? You don't expect a partner to pay, do you? You only put in 25 bucks. With your appetite, you'll use it all up before you get to dessert. Why do you think I bought in here? Oh, Annie, you must be slipping. You know, on the way over here, I saw all these dead heads in front of the soup kitchen. <laughs> Good, why don't you have some? I'm the owner. I can't afford it. <laughs> you trying to do any? But you can't cheer me up. Okay, then you cheer me up. Look, look, it's a customer. Hey, our first customer. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't a bill collector. No. Well, sit right down here. Here, what do you have? Oh, hotcakes. I, I like hotcakes. I, I think I'll have them with the syrup and butter. Yes, sir. A stack of wheat with slick and grease. Slick of wheat with slick and grease. <laughs> Take of wheat with slick and grease. Come it up. Right back. <laughs> Come on, let's get the gas. Here's a few minutes. Hurry up. That's it. Hey, now we'll take the next year. Hey, what happened? Wow. 
Why, that miserable gas company. That's what that guy was trying to tell me over the telephone. No gas. What am I going to do about my gas? Oh, well, take some bicarbonate of soda. Listen, we're not going to lose our first customer. You scoot over to the narcissist, make some hotcakes, and shiftless, you bring them back. I can't go back on the dog. I've been fired. This was several. I'll never know anything about it. Now go out the back way and I'll keep them demobilized until you get back. <laughs> Just a minute, I gotta get some stuff. Where are you? Oh, oh, yes. 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 Hello. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> anything wrong? Why, what could be wrong with that cake? You know, speaking of hot cake, that reminds me of a story of the, the two Eskimos and the totem pole. And the second Eskimo said, Us, totem pole too heavy. You totem pole yourself. <laughs> ah, well, Kipling, what are you doing aboard? I thought you were taking the weekend off. Yeah, I am. Uh, I came back to uh, have lunch. Well, go right ahead. Don't let me hold you up. Do we need it? Do you know? Well, what do you usually do with your lunch? Please, I've got a very delicate stomach. I can't wait any longer. I've got to get something to eat. Wait, right, you haven't heard all my story yet. I'm not interested in the end of your story. <laughs> hey, that's the room. I had to eat three stacks of them before I could get away from seven. Hey, where's our customer? Well, he's gone and he left this for a souvenir. Boy, hot cakes. Just the thing to go with them steaks. <laughs> the boss heard you're feeding half the town on the cup. Sent me and Stanley down to tell you if you don't make them payments tomorrow, there's going to be trouble. Right, Stanley? Uh, would you mind repeating that to our new partner? It'll be a pleasure. Right this way. <laughs> I'll tell you what it's for me. If you don't pay up by no more, I'm moving out everything that ain't nailed down. Horatio, you gonna let him get away with that? I should say not. Now, you listen to me. Ain't you or nobody else big enough to start pushing me around? And while we're on the subject, let me tell you one thing else, mister. You monkey around with me, and you're gonna end up with both eyes on the same side of your nose, just like an elephant. And in case you want to know who put you in the hospital, it's Bullwinkle. Captain Horatio Bullwinkle. Stanley? Meet Mr. Bullwinkle. Oh, as far as I'm concerned, you're just another guy. <laughs> you know, Annie? Maybe this restaurant business ain't for me. You mean you want to unpartner yourself? <laughs> yeah, but uh, of course I'd have to get my investment back. Oh, well, that's fair enough. Here. $25. Yeah, Annie, you're a real sport. What's that for? That's for all that food you gluttoned up. Oh, what are you talking about? I didn't need no 25 bucks worth. Well, six dollars. You know what a big tipper you are. <laughs> I am? Uh, I might have known I'd get chipped. <laughs> How 
Besides, I told you those plates won't stand that rough treatment. <laughs> Well, everything's okay on the Narcissus. How was the dinner business? Well, we served two dinners. I served one to her. Yeah, and I served one to him. <laughs> oh, good. What are you doing back here? I just came back for me sign. Sign? Oh, give it to him. And give him that sign that says, Honesty is the best policy. You might want to use it for laughs. <laughs> for two cents? Now, now, wait a minute, boy. All fair in business. Yeah, you're right about... But you know the reason the boys are all riled up. They thought you'd come here to buy the business back. To buy it back? Are you kidding? Well, hey, haven't you heard that business is booming? Our only trouble is that we don't know what to do with the surplus money. <laughs> Whether to buy stocks and bonds or invest in real estate. Booming? Why, the place is empty like it always was. <laughs> you should have been here at lunchtime while they were swarming over that food like ants. See, in his belief. Well, come back in a half hour, and that same crowd will be here for dinner. This I got a secret. <laughs> me too. Come on, fellas, didn't you hear me? Sandwiches for all, three gratis. Who wants sandwiches? Here we get a hot meal. A uh, hot meal at dinner time? Well, that's the worst thing in the world. Why, it uh, scorches up all the vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir! And with every sandwich, I'm gonna give away a free cigar that ain't even been smoked. Hey, come on, fellas, press up your tuxedos. We're gonna live it up tonight. <laughs> I just dropped in to call your bluff. Well, take a look around. <laughs> hey, these are pretty good. I think I'll have some more. Uh -huh. Yeah, me too. And save this chair for me. I'll be back tomorrow. Okay. Well. <laughs> you wouldn't be thinking about selling the place. You wouldn't be thinking about buying it back with that cough of yours, would you? Uh, what cough? Oh, it's much better. <laughs> you wouldn't be taking the 175 that you paid for it. You wouldn't be giving me 190 to cover what we paid out for you. Well, let me see now. Hey, these are the same guys that was here before. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is Mr. Fogarty. This is the gentleman we bought the business from. He's thinking of buying it back. Oh, Mr. Fogarty, this is Captain Bullwinkle. Hiya. One of our best customers paid $25 for lunch today. $25? Of my word of honor as a gentleman. I got witnesses you said 190. You can't back out. Well, I guess I'm stuck. A deal is a deal. Wait a minute. These customers here, I get what they pay. Oh, and every cent that's in that cash register. It's a deal. All right, nobody leaves without a smoke. As soon as you get through with your dinner, come on over and get your cigar. Everybody get a cigar. Here you are. And one for you? Oh. Hey, you can oh, Buck up your spirits. Just walk right up to Mr. Seven and tell him you want your job back. Uh, look, uh, just tell him your mind blanked out when you quit yesterday. Yes, well, your mind blanked out before it blanked out. Good alert. He's coming out. Oh, Ah, oh, Annie. Yeah. I'd like you to go over these. Oh, problems. Mr. Seven. Uh, I wanted to ask you something. I mean, uh, what I want to say is... Yeah. What he's trying to pussyfoot around about is he wants his job back. Uh, yeah. Wants it back? Well, I didn't think he was serious about leaving. Of course, the job is yours. And, uh, <clears throat> I might even arrange for a little raise. Oh, gee, a raise. Oh, Mr. Seven, it's wonderful. I mean, what I mean is... How much? <laughs> oh, he means thank you, you know. And with all this rich talk, you haven't got a hole that I don't know anything about, have you? Oh, no, no, no. But I am thinking of investing in a little gold mine. Oh. Had breakfast there this morning. Yeah. Poor fellow's doctor called. Hmm. Has to leave town. Terrible cough. What in the world he wants with the rest of this? Oh, goodness. 